undertones of this existing perjury. However, Jesus' purpose was to teach those who would follow in his footsteps that God is no respecter of persons. Today, rather than shunning outsiders, Jesus calls, calls us to step out of our comfort zones, follow, follow, follow his example, and present God's salvation to all people without distinction and discrimination. Can I get um, someone to read the biblical context, please? Context. Matthew 14, 20, Mark pertains to Jesus' ministry. During this period, Jesus often withdrew from the crowd to spend time alone with his disciples for three practical reasons. Escalating hostility toward him by his enemies, his need for physical rest, and his desire to prepare his disciples for his approaching death at Calvary. These periods of withdrawal were filled with opportunities to minister because of the crowd's following, moving his heart to meet their needs. Matthew 15 opens with the confrontation between some Pharisees and Jews who challenged, with, who challenged why Jesus' disciples did not follow the traditional hand washing ritual before eating. Instead of responding to their question, Jesus challenged their violation of God's command through their tradition. After this encounter, Jesus and his disciples traveled north of Israel to the coastal city of Tyre and Sidon. There, Jesus met a Canaanite woman whose faith he tested before revealing that Gentiles would also share in God's kingdom. Thank you. Can I get someone to read the devotional reading, Psalm 61? Hear my cry, O God, and tend unto my prayer. From the end of the earth will I cry unto thee when my heart is over him. Lead me to the rock that is higher than I. For thou hast been a shelter for me in a strong tower from the enemy. I will abide, I will abide in thy tabernacle forever. I will trust in the covenant of my wings. For thou, O God, has heard my bar. Thou hast given me the heritage of those that fear thy name. Thou will prolong the king life and his years as many generations. He shall abide before God forever. O oh, prepare mercy and truth which may preserve him. So I will sing praises unto thy name forever, that I will daily perform my voice. Wow. Wow. Thank you. Mm -hmm. then may we all stand for the key verse. <coughs> Read it together. Jesus, Jesus answered and said, said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith, be it unto thee, and even as thy will. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Matthew 15, 28. And nothing else, we will turn it over to. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thank you, man. Teacher, you welcome. Anyone know if you want to call me on the say I'm a teacher or whatever. Just... Hey, we, we thank her for stepping in. We, with the absence of our superintendent, our assistant superintendent, she stepped in and got started, and we thank her for that. And we thank everyone that took part in uh, opening and reading our lesson this morning. We have a great lesson this, again this morning. And again, good morning to everyone. Help from outside. Help mm. from an outsider. Mm. Uh, great lesson before us this morning. We're not going to prolong the time. We want to start with the uh, first outline persistent faith request. We're going to ask someone if you would read verse 21 through 25, and then uh, the lesson in your book, and then I'll come back with the input and break down of the lesson. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. And his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, 
Lord, help me. Um, Jesus withdrew to Gentile territory, anticipating a long period of rest and retreat from the increasing opposition from his enemies and expanding popularity among the people, his expanding popularity among the people. At some point, a Canaanite woman approached Jesus, repeatedly pleading for mercy and addressing him as Lord and Son of David, a messianic title. She asked, Jesus, she asked for Jesus' help on behalf of her severely demon-possessed daughter. The woman's address and request indicate that she possessed some knowledge of Jews and their religion. Matthew does not reveal the nature of the daughter's demon possession. It would have been, it could have been a drastic personality change, refusing to wear clothing, violent actions, and manipulation, <coughs> deafness, mutinous, supernatural strength, or a combination of many other possibilities. Regardless of the details, the need for deliverance was desperately urgent. Initially, Jesus remained silent. <coughs> However, the disciples' response indicates that the woman continued begging for his help to the point of their exasperation. After a while, the men urged Jesus to send the annoying woman away. The disciples were well acquainted with Jesus' typical response to the hurting. We can assume they wanted him to heal her, chi <coughs> her child so she would go away and leave them alone. Jesus finally responds to the woman, telling her that he was commissioned by God to help his chosen people, Israel, and not Gentiles. The desperate, determined woman was unfazed by Jesus' denial. She continued to plead for his help by humbling herself in Jesus' presence. This Canaanite woman displayed consistent faith in Christ and his power to show mercy to her daughter. How did she find courage to overcome cultural norms regarding Jewish men speaking to women in public and the barrier of racial discrimination between Jews and Gentiles? There are no clues in the text to indicate how she heard about Jesus, but she was evidently convinced that he was the solution to her situation. The woman acted boldly in what she had heard about Jesus. She demonstrated as much, if not more, faith in what Jesus could do than many who claim to have walked with God for decades. Do you have faith that doesn't give up? Is your faith strong enough to confront and defy social barriers that promote injustice and division? Okay, thank you, Lana. Mm -hmm. When I was thinking about that a lot of time, we are we'll make our petition to God and we'll just leave it. You know, sometimes our persistence show our faith. This woman persistent showed her faith and Lana read she broke down social barriers to talk to a Jewish man in public, being a, a, a Gentile woman, somebody that the Jews viewed as less in society. And in those times, in that culture time, she even put herself in danger mm -hmm. to get to Jesus. Okay, thank you, Tony. Okay, our first outline is persistent faith, faith request. Now, they often show up to oppose Jesus, the Pharisees, and he was trying to withdraw himself from the discouraged mass because in the, in the lesson we taught him that everywhere Jesus went, the Pharisees and Sadducees would tag along or follow mm -hmm. because it said they were trying to discredit Jesus' ministry or his teaching. You know, they thought they were the, 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 the perfectionists on the law and all of this stuff. So when Jesus came and began to not, uh, not, do away with the law, but he, he brought in another view about salvation that they they did not understand, so they wanted to discredit him, so Jesus withdrew from that. And now it said he, uh, Jesus attempted to withdraw from religious leaders and the crowd that followed him. They often showed up to oppose Jesus and to discourage the masses from being blessed and transformed by Jesus' misery, miracles and his teaching. After turning the table on a group of Pharisees that attempt to discredit his ministry, Jesus and his disciples left Galilee and headed to the region of Tyre and Sidon, a Gentile area on the coast of Phoenicia. Uh, there, Jesus encountered a Canaanite woman who continually, 
that's persistently pleaded with him to have mercy on her by helping her demon-possessed daughter. Now, the woman addressed Jesus as Lord, son of David, his Messiah, Masonic title, suggesting that she had faith in him and some familiarity with his ministry. Okay, persistent again, she continued appealing to uh, for his help incessantly, persistently, and loudly. The disciple urged Jesus to send a woman away because she continued following them and pleaded for Jesus' help. Mm -hmm. Persistent faith request. Now, when verse 21 said, Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coast of Tyre and Sidon. Sidon. This is about 20, about 50 miles away from where Jesus had left. And he goes into Gentile country. Okay? Now, he goes into Gentile country to get away from the masses of the one that was following him to discredit his ministry. Now, that when I read that, that was kind of unusual because he was coming into a, a, a uh, place where he was supposed to come to the household of Israel. But then he leaves that territory and goes into Gentile country. Okay? And the holy woman of Canaan came out in, of the coast, same coast. Now, as Tony said, she came to him with her persistent following him. No doubt this woman had a, a, a pre-knowledge of Jesus' miracle working power and cried unto him saying, have mercy on me, reverence who he is, O Lord, the son of David. Now, this is the title. Uh, it's one thing to come to church but it's also important that we, we come, we know we come to worship the Almighty God. Mm -hmm. She referenced who he is and then just come up to him and said, Sir, help me. To acknowledge who Jesus was showed that she knew that he was the son of David. Okay? Now, that ain't just a surface uh, uh, that's not just a serpent greeting, I put it that way. For her to say, Oh Lord, son of David, it goes back to that she understood the lineage. Okay? She understood the lineage from where he come from. Okay? And she, in a humble way, she said, Have mercy on me. Hmm. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But, now get this, he answered her not a word. When I saw that, he answered her not a word. I think sometimes we're tested. Right, just stay with it. Yeah. By him just kind of like, he said, now ignore what he didn't say to that. She persistently you know, sometimes we find ourselves, I know I have a lot of times, and, and it said, Lord, know what we need even before we can ask. But sometimes I'll be persistent. Mm -hmm. And it's, oh, you can't, you don't vote to pray repetitious. Mm -hmm. Well, that's what they say. But sometimes we just have to be a little more persistent than we are. Mm -hmm. Understand? Now, not to say that God didn't hear us the first time, but Lord, I'm still calling on you. I'm still persistent about what it is, and, and, and sometimes it, it kind of, it's a test of our faith, you know, and not just give up the first time something don't happen, mm -hmm. okay? He said, but he answered her not a word, and his disciple came and besought him, saying, send her away, for she cries after us. And then in 24, he said, but he answered and said, Am I not sent 
but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now, you would think for a moment that Jesus was like not having compassion. But but when, when I read that, I couldn't help but to think that it wasn't that Jesus didn't have compassion. Jesus knew that this is a question when he said, am I not uh, only sent but only to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. In the book of Isaiah 53 and 6, Isaiah wrote this, and this is going to tie us to. He said, we all like sheep have gone astray. We have turned everyone to his own way, and the Lord has laid on him the iniquity of us all. Okay? Well, when I read that, not just the Israelite. We are bought into that relationship That's right. by our faith. Mm -hmm. Okay? Now, I'm going to show you what I'm talking about. In the book of John, mm -hmm. 1, 11, 12, and 13. Now, Jesus didn't answer this woman a word, but she stayed persistent. Okay? In John 1, 11, 12, and 13, he came unto his own, mm -hmm. and his own received him not. He came to Israel. Mm -hmm. Those Pharisees and scribes, they were, they were Jewish. They knew the Mosaic law. They knew it. He came to them, and they were the worst one. They didn't want to accept it. They were his own. He came to his own and they received him not. And then 12 said, but as many as received him that accepted who he is, he gave he power to become the sons of God even to them that believe what? His On his name. Now don't you think that when she said, oh Lord, son of David, that she so showed she believed. Mm -hmm. So now she has just stepped out from being an outsider mm -hmm. to an inside. Mm -hmm. Just by our faith. Okay? Now, look at verse 13. <coughs> Which were born not of the blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. Now, this, this Canaanite woman, she was, as they said then, they talked about it, they called her dog, they were half breed. Mm -hmm. Okay? They were not full blooded Jews. Mm -hmm. That blood was mixed, and, they, and the Jews didn't receive them as, as a part of the heritage. But they became part of the heritage through accepting who Jesus Christ is. Mm -hmm. Okay? We have a stigma, a sinner, an unredeemed sinner. I said all that. We sinner, we just redeemed. I said an unredeemed sinner. Once that unredeemed sinner confess and accept what Jesus done, he just like the rest of us. He brought it to the family. This woman accepted who Jesus is when she reverenced his Messianic Tower, O Lord, Son of David. Hmm. Now, you think Jesus is going to overlook it? No. Hmm. Then it said that, but he answered and said, I am not sent but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then came she and worshipped him, saying, Lord, Now, if there was a, ever a humble submission, mm -hmm. I just heard it there. Mm -hmm. Lord, help me. She didn't get all into the legal wrangling. Mm -hmm. She just cried out, Lord, help me. A humble submission of who Jesus is and cried out for help. Now, Jesus replied in verse 24 by revealing his Messianic title, ministry, 
to Israel, God's chosen people. Although he would eventually sacrifice his life to reconcile humanity, that's all of us, to God. And then what she said, Lord, help me. The Canaanite woman attitude and action identified the key to navigating the systematic, systemic problem of that day. She faced the crisis of her daughter's demon-generated illness and the cultural stigma of being outside Israel's covenant relationship with God. Now, they thought that when nobody was part of the heritage but the Jews. Okay? But then Isaiah said he came took on the liquid of, of a soul. Mm -hmm. Not just black, not just white. And thank you for that God don't see color. Mm -hmm. Only color God sees is going to be blood. That we are under the blood, we saved by the blood, okay, and, and and we have to remove. We have those stigmas today, and I can imagine the culture of that time, where they thought that they were a a uh, uh, a gentile that they wasn't welcome in their worship in their synagogue, and they would have no social engagement went on the streets and all. Can you imagine how bad that was? But thank God that he sent Jesus that accepted us all as we are. Mm -hmm. Jesus could have, could have been just like the mother dude that he hung around with, mm -hmm. that hung around with him. And they a lot of times would tell Jesus, oh no, you don't need to talk to them. You don't need to associate with them because we don't. Mm -hmm. You know? How many times is in the Bible where they said, oh, you sit eating with a sinner. You, you talking to a, a, this person. But Jesus didn't have no Drawback. Because those that came to Jesus came to Jesus for help. Yeah. This woman came to Jesus for help for her daughter. And he dropped the norms. And just said, she said, Lord, help me. Now, we're going to go to the second outline. We can emulate her example today by recognizing who God is humbling ourselves before him and acknowledging him as the only source of our deliverance. We can emulate that. Now, when I was reading something, I'm going to share this, we're going to go to the second outline. In Matthew 10, 5 and 6, when Jesus commissioned those disciples, that's what he's talking about. So these 12 Jesus sent forth and commanded them saying, go not in the way of the Gentile and to any city of the Samaritan. He said, in ye not. See, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. When I read that passage, you know, I was thinking, okay, he told the 12 not to go around the Samaritans. He said, but rather don't, don't enter into that city, but then Jesus go into the Gentile city, but then he tells them in verse 6, but, but rather go to the lost sheep of Israel. I had to juggle that a little bit to get it to understand what it was. And I, I'm going to bring it home. How can we go somewhere else And fix somebody else mm -hmm. when we got a problem mm -hmm. at home. <laughs> Jesus was telling them, first thing you do, you do is, is go to the lost sheep of him. In other words, you got some lost in your own race, in your own house. <laughs> but when Jesus came along now, he's going out to those other because you know what? He got so much, he got so great a ministry. From the outsiders, did he need the inside? Remember last week when he told the lady, I said, not so great, so, so great of faith, nowhere in him. It was these outsiders that when Jesus healed them or delivered them, they had a great testimony. 
Sometimes we can be blessed right in church and we get quiet. But you let somebody out there, something good happen to them. They're going to tell them in the street. <laughs> That's right. Found some money. Yes, I walked another day and they're going to tell them. Okay. Now that kind of throws us off a little bit. Then. <laughs> when he said, don't, Jesus told his disciples, don't go to him, but go to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Then he goes into a Gentile country. Sometimes, you know, I gotta go over the eye. Sometimes we 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 anxious to fix over there. Mm -hmm. Say, what you say, Bob? I heard you. <laughs> got to fix right here. Amen. All right. Let's go to the second outline. And he answered and said, It is not meat to take the children's bread and to cast it to dogs. And she said, Truth, Lord, yet the dogs eat of the crumbs which fall from their master's table. Then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee as thou, even as thou wilt. And her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Jesus' first response did not deter the woman's persistence. Taken out of context, Jesus' words in verse 26 may appear harsh, prejudicial, and unfeeling. Although, the ancient, although ancient Jews often labeled Gentiles as dogs as a form of disrespect toward them, this was not Jesus' intent. Translated into English, the Greek for dog is little dog, designating a pet. Here, Jesus is comparing God's relationship with Israel and the rest of humanity. His underlying purpose was to test the woman's faith. Her response in verse 27 proves that her faith in Jesus was genuine. The woman was not even slightly discouraged by being called a dog. Instead, she answered um, that even pet dogs are allowed to eat the crumbs that fall from their master's table. Therefore, the woman <clears throat> symbolically reasoned by faith that Jesus can choose as the master to allow the dogs, Gentiles, to eat the crumbs that the children, Israel, either waste or reject. The woman's attitude and behavior revealed her conviction that Jesus is Lord and Messiah and was able to heal her child. Jesus responded by praising her great faith, rewarding her bold persistence, and granting her request. Jesus' denial was merely a test of the woman's faith and less and lesson for the disciples that outsiders, Gentiles, would share in God's kingdom. What is the depth and quality of your faith in God? Have you matured to the level of trusting him for what you need and relying on him to accomplish his purpose for your life? Such persistent faith is sometimes rare or uncommon among believers. Like the Canaanite woman, those who seek the Lord's blessings must also seek him personally, surrendering to his lordship and standing firmly on the truth of his word. Amen. Thank you, Lana. Persistent. Faith reward. When, when she was reading that, I was thinking of today, that woman would have been dealing with what you hear a lot about they call church hurt. You ever heard that term? Yes. Church hurt. That's somebody that's been in a church and they got hurt and treated so bad that they just gave up. This woman dealt with being described as a little pet, dog. That was the norm where the Gentile people was called by the Jew because they was in their mind less. But she read over and over that Jesus uh, not ignored but didn't respond in a way was a test of her faith. Mm -hmm. We go through a lot. Mm -hmm. We go through a lot. And, and I tell anybody, anytime you come in and feel like worshiping God and serving God is going to be easy, it's not going to be easy. It's not going to be easy. You're going to deal with some church hurt. You're going to deal with some people that you, you know, sometimes think, I can't believe they're supposed to be in church. <laughs> You're gonna, we have to deal with that. But you know what we have to do? 
we had to build up strength in God word Lord. and know that we worship well I'm going to say worship with all kinds of people we come to church with all kinds of people I'm going to put it that way and I'm going to explain what I'm saying true worshipers worship God in unity when you come to church with people you're going to have some worshipers and you're going to have some church folks the true worshipers are going to worship God and the church folk is just going to go through the process. Yep. Mm. So true. They come in, they leave out at the same time. Yeah. Some of them come in, they, they receive something and they go out better than the world. Some of them come in, go through the motion and leave out so they ain't getting nothing out of service today. Mm. Okay, now Jesus responded to the Canaanite woman in insistent pleading, catch the letter of God's commanding of, to Israel to distance themselves from the Canaanite and non-Jews. Pious Jews distanced themselves as far away from Gentile as possible or would go out of their way to avoid any contact with them. Jesus used a dog as an ethnic descriptor for Gentiles was accurate from the Jews' cultural perspective. Now, his mission purpose to minister to Israel, God's chosen people, second, addressing her publicly as a Canaanite woman who had no value in either Jewish male, also revealed ethnic and cultural barriers separating them. Jesus' reference to dog is difficult to modern readers to fully intercept or accept. Now, those pious Jews, they understood the Mosaic law. Mm -hmm. And remember when God told Israel to go into the other place and told them not to mix? Okay, you remember that? He told them not to mix because he wanted them to be a light to other nations. Right. Well, did he mean not to associate with them? How can we draw if we separate? That's right. That's right. You can't draw nobody if you separate from them because mm -hmm. they're going to say, oh, no, I don't want to deal with them because they got that holier than I, holier than thou attitude. Yes, sir. Mm -hmm. See, sometimes we misunderstand right. what God's word is really saying. Okay? Now, I'm going to move on. In 26, but he asked and said, is it not meat to take the children bread and cast it to dogs? In Ephesians 2 and 12, he said that at that time you were without Christ being alienated from the commonwealth of Israel, a stranger from the covenant of promise, having no hope and without God in the world. Okay? But I like 13. But now, in Christ, you who were sometime, sometime were far off or made nigh, near, in other words, by the blood of Christ. Now this woman had more knowledge about the promise than some of those that were walking with Jesus. Mm -hmm. Now, her and Jesus were really talking over their head. <laughs> they were talking over their head because they didn't understand what, what she said. She said, and she said, that's true. She said, that's true. She knew it was true that he was sent to Israel. <coughs> She said, yeah, you, that's right there now. She said, Lord, yet the dogs, that's us. We eat of the crumb. In other words, we're going to take the blessing that they refuse. So the dog eat of the crumb which fall from the master's table. In other words, those blessings that the, that the Jew won't receive, the Gentiles will take them. Now, y'all, when you talk about these things, somebody sitting there dropping crumbs. No, this conversation is 
He said the blessing that you came to the Israelites and David didn't receive you. And they want to get caught up in all of this uh, politics about who you came from. And then she said, we just want a blessing. We just want a crumb to fall from the table. In other words, the blessing that they don't want, we'll take it. Mm -hmm. That's what she's saying. It said, and Jesus, then Jesus answered and said unto her, O woman, great is thy faith. Be it unto thee, even as thy will, and her daughter was made whole from that very hour. Her faith, her persistence in her faith, and her knowledge of Jesus, her knowledge of the promise that was for Israel, you know, she said, I know that. I know that you came for them. I know that they are the promised nation. But then, it's the faith. It's the faith that she had and Jesus acknowledged that this woman knows what she's talking about. She did not deny Jesus. When she said, Jesus, oh yeah, that's true. That's true. But she also knew that he came for all of us. And the pastor, he said all the time, you know, people said, we all God children are. We all God creation. We are his children once we accept him. Then we, we move into the joint heir with Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. It ain't just coming to church. It's accepting what Jesus done. Oh, yeah. And being obedient. And knowing his word. Mm -hmm. That's the key. It don't matter whether we black, white, zebra stripe or what. Once we come into that knowledge of who Jesus is and accept him, know what Jesus has done for us, that he died for all of us, mm -hmm. we become Joan Air. We become Joan Air. And this woman had faith. It was a key. Persistent. I, 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 just, I just love that word this morning. Persistent. I think sometimes, you know, we, we, we just got to keep on being persistent until we get our breakthrough. Amen. That's right. It ain't that God didn't hear us. It might not be time. I remember some time praying and, and, I, and, and I, I went to Bible study with the Lord. Lord, you said. <laughs> God know what he said. <laughs> Your word said. I'm going to hear you lean on what his word said. And get this. Come on, fam. I love this. The Bible says God is not a man that he should lie. Amen. Everything that he promised, oh, yeah. when we come to be his, God do it. Amen. He might not do it the way we think it ought to be done, yeah. but it's going to be done for our benefit. Oh, yeah. It's going to be done for our good. Mm. Amen. We'll let the pastor come to our final word. Okay. Uh, just, just a little bit of insight, uh, not being repetitious. But if you look at the lesson, you got to also know the background mm -hmm. of how they got where they was at mm -hmm. in this lesson. Because actually, when you go back and read this, this text, uh, that uh, this mother, that uh, she didn't go to Jesus for herself. She went to cover her daughter. And that, that give me that God will use vehicles or use objects and person to really get to the point mm -hmm. where he's trying to get to. Because uh, mm -hmm. even though uh, she was a worshiper of Baal, because if you go back and read in Genesis and chapter 9, uh, when Noah got off the ark and got ready to start a new world, he had three sons. Mm -hmm. And the one of them name was Ham, and he seen his his uh, father nakedness, and went back and brought shame on him. Mm -hmm. And when he brought shame on, he cursed Cain. Mm -hmm. And now here, well, since Genesis all the way back up here, Cain was cursed mm -hmm. with mm -hmm. worshiping idols. Yes. Mm -hmm. And and this woman, she didn't get right. Sometimes God will use vehicles. I'm saying use. Individual get to the one that he wanted to get to, mm -hmm. 
and that was that woman. Mm -hmm. Because we have a habit of uh, in the name of Jesus. She had heard of him. Mm -hmm. But we use phrases like we are Christian, which we're not. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? We 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 you we learn the the principle of the object without getting the source. So so when he when he uh got there and when the devil possessed and when he, he she didn't get right until she came to worship but up here he was explaining to I'm gonna step outside what I really come here for. Yes. Because they were coming for the house of Israel. And this being a Gentile, he went and stepped into another norm. Mm -hmm. Don't get beside yourself. That's why we are where we are now because Jesus stepped out of the realm of who the chosen people were that we have a right as Gentiles to the crypt. That's something that we ought to be grateful for. Oh, yes. And when he stepped out of that realm and this woman came to him, and uh, she was begging and crying persistent to mean another thing. Mm -hmm. Don't stop when God don't say nothing. Mm -hmm. That's right. You, you got to use persistent. You got, mm -hmm. to, you got to label at that thing. Because really, what Jesus was doing is getting to the mother. And that daughter was a vehicle mm -hmm. for getting her right first. Mm -hmm. as, as the instructor said, mm -hmm. how can we go into a territory when we ain't first got it? Mm -hmm. So in order when she came to Jesus for the answer, he had to get her right. Mm -hmm. Because when, when, when he said that he came not and accepted for the lost house of Israel, mm -hmm. and then the book said that, then she came and worshiped him mm -hmm. before she will worship our God. You see what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And that, that's very important. You got to come to Jesus. That gives us infinity that we have to come. Not your mama, not your daddy, mm -hmm. not your sister, brother. Each individual, when you want relief from God, you got to go to him. Yes. Yes. Now, another, I'm going to close it. Exactly. Even his disciples, being part of Jesus, who had trained them and taught them, look what they did. <laughs> they, 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 they were selfish because <laughs> yes. she crying they were trying to put her away mm -hmm. and why she coming here crying mm -hmm. but but God knows the heart that's what I say whatever we do is real yes. God knows who we are yes. he knew that woman was pacific there for a reason and she'll do anything to get them demons out of her daughter. Yeah. Mm -hmm. and, and you'll do the same thing, especially a mother hen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. They got instinct built in them. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Will tell you apart. Because I, I, I remember the little bitties in the hen. Mm -hmm. We were just playing with them. But, but I'm going to try to make a story mm -hmm. short mm -hmm. to get you to know how God will fix the end of it. If you want to hear and get some answer, she had to come to God herself. Amen. And, and when she came, then he said that, uh, that your daughter was here from that very hour. Mm -hmm. You hear something? The daughter, she ain't going to know. It was all about this mother. Yes. Mm -hmm. Mother have power. You have power. And that's why it's so important to be a part of the household of faith. Not a building, not with no pews, but with God. Mm -hmm. He's so wise and how he takes something that was cursed and brought us all the way to the New Testament yes. and show her how she will worship our God. Mm -hmm. But she switched partners. Oh, yeah. At first she was wishing the idols. But when God, with her persistent coming there, with undoubting come to God and, and he spoke to her and sometimes, don't get upset if you don't answer, answer you right then. Because right. verse 28, 
he could have answered what he did in verse 21. Oh, yeah. But God got his own time set mm -hmm. when we go to him. Yes. Mm -hmm. And you know what he looked for? He looked for purity. He looked for understanding. Mm -hmm. That means you can go him blunt all you want to. Oh. Ain't nothing going to happen. Because you don't make the decision where you got it then or not. That's God right. consists of reading your heart all the time. Mm -hmm. That's what nobody can take away from you. Mm -hmm. I don't care how people talk about you, mm -hmm. try to condemn you. If God is for you, that's what we can say boldly. Yeah. He molded in the whole world against yes. you. And that's when you have been signed, sealed. And this is what the lesson is all about. Mm -hmm. So we have our way. We're ready. We're going to put it down. But this woman was consistent with a plea to God. Yes. And, and eventually, all the people that were healed, they left their home, mm -hmm. they left their grave because of what Jesus had done. Yes. And I'm so grateful that we was lost mm -hmm. out of the ark of the covenant as Gentiles. Yes. But look at him. It was, he stepped out of his comfort zone. And when other people refused, and we were able to get that new birth through him. Yes. Isn't that good news? Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Even though we're going through in the building because he said that we didn't tag them and grow together, it mm -hmm. ain't your job to criticize nobody. Mm -hmm. you, you out of your league. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Something can look right and don't be right. Mm -hmm. If God got his hands on and you can rest assured. So hold up your heads. Mm. Read his word for yourself. Mm -hmm. There's a whole lot of stuff going on in the <laughs> atmosphere. Mm -hmm. And they twisting his word. Because if you read Mark. And you read Matthew. They saying the same thing. But they saying what they saw. Mm -hmm. Was a different way. Mm -hmm. So you always research. And go back and see how each one. That's his opinion. Mm -hmm. That's Matthew's opinion. So, God's word is still the same. Amen. So, that's because you don't see it like we ought to see it. Keep on searching, it'll come. Amen. So, we thank God for these types of lesson. And, and when you don't see it, clear ask. Mm -hmm. Something you don't always get an answer. Amen. But God will reveal it to you mm -hmm. if you consistent yes. with your faith. Mm -hmm. And that one day that uh, when we have reached that, we can realize that God is still alive. Amen. We like to thank our teacher. Amen. <laughs> Amen. We bring our fine lesson this morning, Pastor. We have an announcement from the Grow Hill Missionary Baptist Church. Um, they will be having a faith talk on May 22nd. 2024, 5.30 p.m. in Uri, Alabama, Sunday School Portland section is Meet Our Teachers. They will have panel discussion, Q&A time. Pastor William Bradley and Reverend uh, T.L. Douglas is educational empowering, great food, great games, activities, fun, and fellowship. We'll be standing for the closing prayer. <laughs> Dear God, you have called us to be over a different age in this world and to reach people without regard of society and culture. Nor help us to overcome our hang up and give us persistent faith to show your love and it to create one without prejudgment and accept of Jesus' name. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Oh, give thanks unto the